morning, you strange and wonderful weirdos. I'm John. I'm Stacy. It's Tuesday, January the 10th, 2023. And here's why. Today is strange. We practiced. We really didn't. <laughs> we really didn't. We'll be accused of it, though. <laughs> okay, so let's start with a story about a once in 50,000 year comet that you may be able to see with the naked eye. Oh, wow. Yeah, very interesting. So it's a newly discovered comet. and it could... I have a librarian from when I was a kid that was around for the first one. <laughs> you know what her name was? What's that? Mrs. Vivian Butt. Nah. Uh-huh. But in my annual, and mm-hmm. you've seen this, uh-huh. in my annual, there is a tribute page to her on the very last page. It's my sixth grade annual, I think, mm-hmm. because women used to use their husband's name very, you know, many times, right? It was like Mrs. John Edwards, right? You know, right. Mr. and Mrs. John Edwards, whatever, right? <clears throat> they wanted to give tribute to Mrs. Harry Butt. I can't believe that woman worked in an elementary school. And they put that, <laughs> Mrs. Harry Butt, in the back of an annual. <sighs> wow. I had her sign it. She must really love him. I had her sign it. Of course you did. It was true love. (laughs) So anyway. Pray continue. Okay. Comet. uh, Newly discovered comet. It's called C2022E3ZTF. Yes. Nice original name there. Uh, After the Zwicky Transient Facility that first spotted it last year. Of course. Um, Now, they believe that it will come closest to the sun on January 12th, but then it will pass the closest to the earth on February 1st. And they uh, say that it'll be easy to see it with a good pair of binoculars. Um, The best time for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere is the last week of January, because on the 21st, 22nd, you get the new moon. Oh, yeah. So very dark. Very dark, yeah. And uh, about that time, it will be passing um, sort of Ursa Major, Ursa Minor area. Mm -hmm. So if you're a stargazer you want to see a really cool cool comet that won't be around again for another fifty thousand years so you know you probably won't get to see it again uh there you go you can stargaze and have a look uh they're not sure where it came from they believe it came from the oort cloud and they don't know that much about it yeah you gotta watch those things (laughs) you usually smell them first huge underbite (laughs) right right (laughs) um and they say after this visit it will be permanently ejected from the solar system and that the james webb space telescope is going to observe it but not take any images of course it is which is very odd why wouldn't it take pictures if it could well because they're gonna see people flying it things oh do you think avila was gonna get on this one i hope it really looks like a comet (laughs) i mean you know I don't know why else they wouldn't want to take pictures with a giant right. camera in space. Right. Well, they were they made a point to say that it's going to be closely watching it with the telescope, but not take images. Instead, studying its composition. I guess it can't do both. It can't study the composition and take pictures. That would be too difficult for the ten billion dollar <laughs> James Webb. It's like they got a giant Nikon up in space. They're like, <laughs> it's only got twenty one pictures, sir. <laughs> to choose wisely. We're on nine. Nine. <laughs> you really want to take a picture of the art cloud. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on and let's talk about something else that happened in space. Elsa. The, something else that happened. happened. I'm sorry. I'm slurring my words together. Uh, the X-Class solar flare that just mm. happened last week. That was a shocker. Yes. Yeah, so there's a huge sunspot that is currently facing the Earth. It's sunspot AR3182. Always been a troublemaker, that 3182. It's a problem. Yeah. It's better than um, <laughs> OU812. <laughs> that was a real true. bad one. Um, so it's recently seen its magnetic field change. It's become really unstable. And so they're claiming that there is a possibility that we could have X-class solar flare pointed at Earth that, you know, would cause havoc. Yeah. I mean, we just had a Mm -hmm. X-class solar flare. Yeah. On January 5th. Yeah. Was the last one. Um, and they 
have raised the percentage. I guess they give you a percentage of likelihood, and I think they've raised it up to about 30%. There's a 30% chance that yeah. we're going to actually get hit. Now, This it, last one was even, like you were talking, from a mysterious sunspot. Like, they didn't even expect this song. It, no, it, it just, was a surprise. Yeah. It was a surprise. And they say that, um, now if you don't know much about solar flares, you know, they have classes, like those smallest ones are A. X is the strongest one that you can get. And... The We're most... at solar maximum, so it yeah. can be expected, but still, yeah, X class flares you don't want. And right, they're fairly rare. Yeah, oh, they are rare. And I mean, uh, luckily for us, one of the biggest ones that ever happened was really before technology, mm -hmm. and it still knocked out all the telegraph lines. It was like, just blew them to hell. 1859. There you go. I'm yes. glad you got your homework. They called there. it the Carrington event. They do. I think they said the, didn't they say it started fires in some of the it telegraph did. offices? It because did. It sparked them or whatever? All the way back. Um, and what would happen now is, unless you were going to tell it would happen now. I mean, they don't really know what would happen in that kind of, like you said, it was before technology. I mean, they realized it would interfere with our power grids and radio signals and wipe out a bunch of So you know stuff. your crazy Uncle James that has all that <laughs> Patriot supply food down in the basement? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You may want to go stay at James's for a few days. Yeah, rub elbows with that guy. Mm -hmm. So um, I think they said that if an event similar to that one in 1859 happened today, it could result between 0.6 and 2.6 trillion dollars in damage. What an odd, like... That means nothing to me. Spread. I know, me either. <laughs> a lot of damage. I'll never see 0.6. Lots of damage. All right. So while we're talking about space and telescopes and things in the sky, um, NASA has unveiled their initial plan for a multi-billion dollar telescope to find life on alien worlds. Really? Yes, it's going to be called the Habitable Worlds Observatory. Now, they've just uh, released the information on this at a meeting of the American Astronomical Society. It's just in the planning stages. Obviously, and because they didn't make an acronym. They're hoping... Oh, it's the Habitable Worlds Observatory, the HWO. It doesn't say anything. Yeah, but... Hey. Just, I know, I know. They are slacking. Um, Should have been like hot <laughs> or... You know, normally they make something fun. Or they just name stuff like preposterous things, like giant, large telescope. Which, right, right. Like, the like, extremely large yeah, telescope. Like the one in like England? Mm -hmm. It's like the mm -hmm. humongously large, pretentious <laughs> telescope. <laughs> And that's what they name it. And I love it. Yes. Um, so this one will be just as big as the James Webb Telescope. However, it, its goal would be to look for signs of life on Earth-like planets. And they are planning on this hopefully the early 2040s. So it's still a ways away. Um, and the one good thing about this that the James Webb Telescope doesn't have is this one would have the ability to be upgraded in space yeah. with new equipment. Because I would hope so. We could send robot dogs up there by that point. To, yeah, the to ten the ten billion dollar James Webb Space Telescope not only can't take pictures and observe things at the same time, you can't change the equipment out on it. So it's pretty much what you got's what you got. If we make it to the twenty forties. <laughs> As a civilization, <laughs> right? I'll be shocked. Well, it's not the next. It's not the next telescope that's going up. They already have plans in 2027 to launch the Nancy Grace Roman Observatory, um, which will hunt for dark energy and exoplanets. Of course, it's uh, it's hunting for dark energy. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm gonna find that killer. <laughs> I'm gonna find it. He hurt that girl. So this is all part of the Great Observatories program, which had stopped, but they're starting to resurrect it. Um, this is the same program that saw the, like the Hubble and several others. They back had in to the get 90s. while the getting was good, while everybody yeah. was all like James Webb loving. Yeah, they're like, oh, let's just let's get some more money, do yeah. some more telescopes. I tell you what, yeah. somebody throw some more pictures up, like those Korean pictures. Did you see that? I did not. So the Korean lunar deal—that's mm -hmm. um, the proper name of it. I'm sure it is. Yesterday, they published some pics, and instead of getting all fancy, let's show some pretty pictures of the Earth, they creeped everybody out. <laughs> Black and white pics from the moon looking at Earth are cool. Very wow. cool. I'll have to find some of those. In fact, I've already sent you some, so why don't we show one now? Isn't that cool? Wow, that's amazing. It's actually going to be the background of my phone for a while. <laughs> that's really cool. It is. It's, it's eerie. I like it. All right, so let's move on to our next story. Let's. This is a story out of Newsweek that is talking about Russia. Now, in Russia, they claim they shot down a UFO. It's just Have the way you, you said it. Have you seen this story? In Soviet Russia. 
<laughs> UFO shoot you down. <laughs> so there was a news story that carried a Wait headline. Wait a second. Did you say they said they shot down a UFO? Yes, there was a news story in Russia, and the headline said a UFO in the form of a ball was shot down in the sky. Proper news story. Proper news story in Russia. Now, they claim that it was a small-sized object in the shape of a ball. It had been discovering flying in the wind, whatever that means. I don't know what that means. And Normally it means somebody's they... like missing after... <laughs> smoking all your drugs that you had them sell. And you're like, where's Chachi? He's in the wind. <laughs> they, said, they said they made the decision uh, to liquidate it. And then they used their anti-aircraft defense to blow it up. And there was a video, surprisingly enough, of them blowing it up that was published and shared. And it all seems like just a thing where they can be like, oh, look at our technology that we have. I don't know, but the headline did say do UFO. They, do they think this is the thing that makes Ukraine like yield? No idea. I have no idea. Just because they're bloody um, interested? <laughs> maybe. Zelensky's down there going, you don't think he really did it, do you? <laughs> you don't think he really has UFO, huh, comrade? I believe he does. Well, the thing about it is that they claim... All right, we give up. We give up. <laughs> I want to see the UFO. They have all the anti-aircraft defense because there's supposedly a lot of drone strikes, but they never report on the drone strikes. They just happen to say that, oh, there was this one. It was inside of a ball. It was shiny. We so shot it down. I remember at the first of the conflict, mm -hmm. there was many Foo Fighter type reports. There were. Of UFOs. In fact, it was huge. It went all over everywhere mm -hmm. on Reddit and everything. There was, you know, tons of reports yeah, of, from the Ukraine, I think. Yeah, of yeah. the Ukraine, of pilots seeing UFOs. And then it kind of went away. Right. Went away in a big way. Mm -hmm. And then I think I actually seen a debunking report saying, ah, it was, you know. It was this or that. It was Schmizzle-Schmizzle. Yeah. Ha Schmizzle-Schmizzle happens a lot in the Ukraine. <laughs> but So, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was a UFO. Listen, if, if what Tom DeLong said, Washington Post put up this really interesting eight minute video okay and watch your post if you go there it will annoy you because the sign in or subscribe thing oh yeah so i had to backdoor it to find the video and i still had to watch it with a please subscribe thing but if you watch that video it's really interesting it really is it has a little quip from tom DeLong in it and it's so cool what he says because he talks about, you know, people are, are looking, you know, is it alien? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, this technology? Is it our technology? Is it this, that? Right. We, we've eliminated many things. Right. But he's like, what they're not saying is everything is linear. And, and like the future, the past, and now is all happening. Mm -hmm. And you can go... To any part of it so people are looking for something from outer space he's like when in, wow. he said when in reality and this is not a direct quote obviously obviously uh when in reality you can go from any time it was basically like he was trying to tell what he had learned right and he right. said we can't do it but someone can right so maybe it is just us and from the extreme future so you got to think does this not make a lot of sense to warning you about nuclear things right mm -hmm. all the stories about nuclear stuff all the reports about and you got to think if we're in the future after a big nuclear attack we have to stay underground or inside we would probably end up looking like grays with the big old eyes and the we would definitely come back and shut the nukes off yeah or you know maybe there's some kind of thing not wanting us to interfere or whatever that much and i mean it would even explain abductions if they need some sort of like if there's some illness in the future that they're trying to prevent or get medicine for or yeah. figure out make us not be stupid i don't know if that's possible i don't either <laughs> but it is interesting nonetheless it is, it is very interesting and i was thinking about god at tours because you always see like these sightings around things like conflicts or the like wouldn't that be interesting? It's like in the, in the future, you know, thousands of years ahead. Oh, yeah. They're like, all right, yeah, come see the, the skirmish that started World War Three. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a business. From the safety of your own UFO. It's all about, yeah, until they fly over Russia. <laughs> Somebody's got a nightmare on their hand Somebody's right now, don't they? Somebody's got to do. <laughs> There's a debacle in the future somewhere. As long as he wasn't taking the ball. Oh.
Uh, all right. So let's move on. Let's do a story about AI. So artificial intelligence is about to defend a human in court for the first time ever. Well, hopefully that AI is well tempered <laughs> like all the other ones you've told me about. So there is an AI robot. It's called Do Not Pay. Now this particular AI bot robot, it's just a it's not an actual physical robot. It's online. It's not a new thing. There has been is that a, like a Chinese name? Do not pay? That's the name of the website. It's called do not pay.com. Oh. I'm oh, sorry. It's like do not pay. Do not pay. It's yeah. not that's not his name. It's not like no. spelled like donut. And... No, 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 no. It's do not pay. It's a an AI sorry, bot. China. Sorry, that was developed. Um there was but come an article. On. Do not pay sounds like one of your names. <laughs> There's an article back in 2017 talking about it, saying it was designed and built by a Stanford University student named Joshua Browder. And he dubbed it back then even the world's first robot lawyer. And it's very easy to use. You go to the website and you tell it what you need. Like, let's say you want to fight a parking fine or you need to get a refund on faulty goods. Uh, the bot will ask you some questions and then it will write out a letter that you can use to you know, get a response about your problem. It will cite laws and restrictions and regulations, whatever you need to help you resolve your legal issue. And it's really popular. And supposedly out of, I think in the last however many years, it's gotten nearly 400,000 tickets thrown out of court, like speeding tickets and parking tickets and things like that. That's like what it's really good for. Now it turns the out- The judge is probably like, okay, so we're listening to your robot today. Um, Yes, that's correct, Judge. <laughs> How is little Susie doing? Online profile is readily available. <laughs> it's not quite like that. Now, what's going to happen this time is the person that is going to court, it's a case that has to do with a speeding ticket, and they are going to have the AI robot on their phone with an earpiece, and they are only going to say in court what the AI tells them to say. It's going to listen to the court proceedings and tell the person what to say and they have promised i guess the company is sort of doing this as a test they'll pay it they've promised that they'll pay if they don't win but you know this person has to just say what the ai tells them to say i hope so, it's not a poor county that's allowing them to try this for the first time i don't care how tight it is we're getting that money now it says that they uh have not disclosed the location of the court or the name of the defendants they don't want people coming to i guess make a debacle of it um but you know, that's it's a test, I suppose. The guy's going to only say what the AI instructs him to say and see if he wins his case. If huh. it can actually work live in court with a judge. Using what the artificial intelligence tells us to say. Yes. And it's been running for, you know, since 2017 at least. You know, so it shouldn't be hard to make a lawyer program. Five or six. <laughs> you don't even have to be honest. Right. In fact, right. it's encouraged. <laughs> Well, I think it's neat that you, if you have a problem, like say you have a problem with your landlord and you need to send a letter or something, you can just tell it what you need and it'll you know what else write cool. it for you. And also AI related. What's that? You remember those robot dogs I was talking of? Mm -hmm. they, they ain't going to trace back to me. <laughs> My DNA is not there. They also could take care of your landlord problem. <laughs> Except now you've said it. So... I have. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Uh, let's talk about a story from Utah about mysterious antenna that are appearing in Utah's hills, and officials are stumped. Go ahead. Yes. Strange antennas have appeared in the foothills around Salt Lake City, and authorities have no idea who put them up, and they've really been appearing for... Joseph Smith! ...about a year. <laughs> Why Joseph Smith? Because of all the alien contact. Mm, mm. They're mnemonic uh, <laughs> antennas. <laughs> well, they've been noticing them for about a year. And whenever they find them, they take them down. And they say they're basically fiberglass antenna, locked battery packs, and a solar panel to power it. They have no idea who's setting them up. Um, the things are bolted into rocks around the area. And they've even found one uh, on top of a mountain, like up at 7,000 feet. And they claim that it would be really difficult for one person to do. It's not impossible. One person could do it, but they're, they, you know, they weigh 50 or 60 pounds. They're pretty heavy. Um, they have no idea why they, someone's been doing this. Their speculation is that it's some sort of cryptocurrency mining operation. There is a cryptocurrency out there um, called Helium that uses antennas to to get a long, wide range. And you, I guess you mine based on the area you're covering and not necessarily you know, 
other things. It just depends on how Does anybody wide range. Understand that? I don't know, and I don't see how. It, I don't think even this cryptocurrency is profitable enough to warrant huge antennas. I would stay away from all of them right now. I would too. I would too. But they said they don't know uh, who's doing it. They didn't even open the box, the battery. They just got it off the hill and every time they find them, they just go and take them down and get them off the hill. Um, it actually takes a couple people. They have to have special tools to, get, very, to get them down. That's very, very weird story. So strange. Um, and they say they've appeared on steep peaks and in one instance, it required a team of five people to get it off. Um, now, it's... Four of them were very dumb. Found on uh, land managed by the University of Utah and Forest Service. So they're there illegally, obviously. They don't have permission to be putting the antenna up. You think these Utahian, Utahian... Oh, here we go again. I don't know. U- 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 Utah... Utonit? Utonit? No. U- no. Utah. I don't know. Utahians. Probably Utahians. That's really weird sounding, isn't it? There's no other way to say it. Utah. Utahas? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Utahnings. Utahnings. All right. So anyway, these bleeding Mormons. The Utah Utah uh, people. The Utah people. <laughs> you would think that the Utah people's government officials, not officials, like the people that drive the green trucks mm-hmm. and clean up stuff on the mountains. Forest service. Those people. Yeah. Go after mountain bobs. I'm not sure where this is going. Anyway, well, you would think those people... The people that go save bobcats when they're caught in a tree up on top of rock. I gotcha, I gotcha. Anyway, forestry service. Right, 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 right. Forestry service. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of the Utah wilderness, if you will, is hard terrain. It's, it's you know, big freaking rock mountains and all this stuff. You mm-hmm. would think that... You know, you wouldn't need that many people because they would know how to do it. They would be used to going up heights and all this stuff. So to need all those people is kind of yes, strange. It is strange. And it's strange that people can get those in there without being noticed. I mean, you'd think it would take a while and lugging all that stuff up there. Obviously, there's a defense mechanism on those antennas to make people <laughs> freaking dumb when they try talking about it. <laughs> Let's just move on. Okay, so let's do this last story. Let's. All right, so this is a story from British Columbia. Awesome. And apparently a pigeon wearing crystal meth like a backpack was caught inside a British Columbia prison yard. <laughs> so this happened uh, right back at the end of December um, at the Pacific Institution in Abbott. Abbotsford, British Columbia, and officers were standing in one of the fenced inmate unit yards, uh, which, you know, they regularly use for hanging out, being outside, when they saw this bird with a little backpack on, and they thought that was pretty weird, so they uh, had to corner it. Uh, They said it looked pretty funny, seeing a bunch of prison guards trying to catch a pigeon, but once they caught it, they removed the backpack and they found about 30 grams of crystal meth, which they claim is a fairly substantial amount. I don't actually know. I'm assuming that is correct. It's fairly substantial. Um, (laughs) So it's funny because they've increasingly been looking for drones because there have been drones dropping contraband in correctional facilities. And since they did a long-standing thing. crackdown on drones, I guess people, crackdown. people have gone old school and gone back to the pigeons. Now, this is not the first time. Even in this article that I was reading, there is uh, another article cited from like 1930, I think. Yeah, 1930 that says carrier pigeons smuggle drugs. It was in the newspaper in 1930. That's when we still had carrier pigeons. And it said that a pigeon breeder approached federal custom officers with because a pigeon that he sold came back to him and had cocaine on his legs and capsules on his legs. So it's Damn, been, pigeons, you can't trust them. That's something that happened. Of course he went and told he's a stool pigeon. Now, <laughs> they say there's only a couple of ways this could have happened. Either uh, someone <laughs> had the pigeon and threw him over into the prison, like weighted him down with a crystal meth and threw him over the wall. Um, or someone inside the prison trained the pigeon it himself and raised it outside and then sent it off to get the drugs and come back. Because, you know, homing pigeons. I totally see like a Morgan Freeman type character. Yeah, we're talking Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Here, where they're raising the birds. Okay, little pigeon. <laughs> uh, little pigeon. What a good little pigeon. You know, you're not being good right now, are you? <laughs> Trying to get away now, aren't you? That ain't going to happen, little pigeon. You understand? <laughs> Oh, what's this? The pigeon lost all his teeth. Yeah, this is... 
Pigeon didn't have teeth to start with, did it? Exactly. Okay. No. Uh, so something new they're going to have to watch for now. I tell you what, drug smugglers, they're creative, aren't they? They are. If you have an orifice, drugs will travel. <laughs> and that's why. Oh, hey, by the way, if you ever listen to Paranormal Sideshow, it's a good week to start because we're back. We're going to have a new one later this week, and it's fantastic. Creepy topics, cool topics. few guests, maybe. few guests. Yeah, we're doing things like that now. <laughs> Again, because we're Canadian, don't you know? Eh? And that's why today is strange. 